Hi guys. Today I thought I'd show you how to do a um, an extruded hidden magic technique, styly thingy, um, which is essentially a Makume Gane. Um, you're going to need quite a few things because I'm going to be making a bangle and possibly a pendant. It's, I'll see how much um, veneer I've got left over. But let's just say I'm making a bangle for today, a cuff bangle. So you're going to need one of these cuff bangle forms, which I will list in my links in the description. Um, they'll be in, Everything will be in my Amazon storefront, which will be linked in the description below. Um, you're going to need an extruder one of these things that you crank and I'm going to be using the circle thing I don't know what you call them um, you'll also need a small cutter because we're going to cut out um, circles from each of these clays and it's obviously got to be fairly small because it's got to be able to fit in there the clay's got to be able to fit in there so there's that um, you'll also need some black mica powder um, a couple of or as many stamps as you want to, but I'm going with these two. And I found this this style of stamp with the metal cutting part is really good for this technique. I love it. Again, that will be linked. And I've just got this little flower rubber stamp as well, but something that's going to impress quite nicely into the clay. Um, obviously, I've got my clazies all rolled out onto a number three on my Atlas 150, zero being the thickest setting. And I've got some translucent turquoise white black pomegranate red and orange i've also rolled out a strip ready for my bangle in black again this is rolled onto a number three and then also another strip rolled onto a number three in turquoise which will be the second layer of the bangle um a blade obviously oh and another just a small ball of translucent, which will be an added extra embellishment. I'm just gonna make a very simple um, turquoise with it, faux turquoise. I think that's everything. There's quite a lot going on in this. But first thing first then, take your small cutter and you're just gonna cut out circles from every piece of the clay that you've rolled out. I'm not gonna do all this on camera because it's self-explanatory and I always get one that sticks in there. So I'm just gonna go through, oh my gosh, that one's stuck as well. Each one, each color, until I've got all my little circles ready. So <laughs> this one's annoying me. So I'm just gonna go and do the rest off camera for all of the colors. So you're just cutting out some little circles. Okay, I'll be back. All right, guys, I've cut out all my little circles in all the different colours. I'm just making myself a little bit of room here. Getting a bit squashed again. And now what I'm going to do is just randomly layer up the colours. Just stack the circles on top of each other like so. Um, and like I say, it's very random. It's no rhyme or reason. I'm not really consciously thinking about it. Um... I'm not adding that much black, though, just a little bit. Oops. So just keep stacking until you've got enough to fit into the extruder. We'll probably have to do two or three of these because um, there's going to be more than enough to make two or three extruded logs. Some of this is really stuck onto the tile. Like I say, random, very random. Um, and you don't have to use these colours, obviously. You could use any colours you wanted. You don't even have to use this many colours. Like I say, I just wanted something bright and cheerful. Let me see what's going on with this. Let's add a little bit more black here. Orange, blue. So I'm just doing a very rough stack. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to make it big enough so it fits into the extruder. And I'm thinking that might be... I could actually go a little bit more, a bit 
this is going to be rolled a little bit so it's going to be stretched out so I think I'm good with that so when you've got one little stack like that just give it a roll and compress it all together so you're just making a, a log basically and it doesn't have to be neat and tidy you see some of the colors are kind of getting a little bit mushed but that's fine because the extruder will do its thing All right, so I'm just going to take this log and I'm going to place it inside this extruder and I did that perfectly. It just fits in there. That's cool. I'm going to take my circle. Guys, if you if anybody can tell me what you actually call these, I cannot think what they're called. They come with a whole the extruders come with a whole um selection of different shapes and I can't think what they're called. So, in the comments if you could tell me what they're called. I'll just keep calling them thingies until then. So put your, um, your log inside the extruder, um, put your circle in, screw on the end and you're ready to extrude. And now this does squeak, so bear with me. So you're just basically cranking the handle at the top. I don't use these very often because they are the hard work and they kind of hurt my hands a little bit. But once in a while, I'll use it so you can see this log coming out now and all those colours that you've stuck together are all getting squished and squashed into a really cool <clears throat> selection of colours you'll see when you cut into them. So I'm just going to keep extruding this until I've got a big sausage, a long sausage. Or a long snake. I know you, all you can see is my arm right now, but it's quite difficult doing this on camera. But there we go, I've got a long snake now, and I'm just going to break this off at one end and just tidy this end up, and I can show you inside. So that's what it's going to look inside, but it's going to vary as you go down because all those different colours that are in there. So there's the first. Um, snake and I'm going to go and do the rest off camera so again I'm literally just stacking these colours like so and back through the extruder and I'm hoping to get another two out of this we'll see but that's all I'm doing so I'm going to go off camera and do the rest and I'll be back all right I've got my three I managed to get three uh, sausages out of that which is I would say is what you would really need to get is like three um, lengths of these and I'm just going to cut them into uh, roughly two inch sections. I've already marked them out because I used a ruler to mark it out because I'm not very good at eyeballing and even when I use a ruler I'm still not that great at it. But anyway, I'll just show you some. Look, you get different colours all the way through. It's really cool and then it's going to be different on the other side as well. All right, so I'm just going to take each of these and I'm going to stack them one on top of each other. Again, I'm being pretty random because it doesn't matter because you're going to get a different colour depending on where you cut anyway. So, that being said, try and fit them on. I'm doing four, four together like that. Just keep stacking them until you've used them all up. And just give them a little press from time to time so they actually stick together. How have I got one left? <laughs> I've got one left for some reason. Maybe I only did three on one of them. <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay, all right, so I've got all these stacked into somewhat of a block. Actually, I was gonna say, I actually already cut a little bit off. You can actually leave a few little pieces over and I'll show you why later. So that kind of worked out good. All right, so I'm just gonna now form this into a nice block. 
I don't know if you all know what hidden magic actually is. Like I say, it's essentially a Makume Gani, but the traditional way of doing this is to make um, Skinner Blend Bullseye canes and pretty much do the same thing as this. But this is just a... I wouldn't say it's any quicker, but I'd say it's a little bit easier just to extrude and you get all those really nice colours running through. Um, it's not a new technique to me. It's not something I thought up. I've seen it in several different um, tutorials. But I thought I'd give it a go. All right, so when you're happy with your block, I'm just gonna make sure it's relatively square. Then what you need to do is get corner to corner like this. So you're not going straight down, you're taking the corner of the top and the bottom of the cube and you're gonna press that way. So you, you're getting more of a, almost a diamond look. So gently press all the way down. Like so, until it's flat basically because this is going to get rolled through the pasta machine as well all right so when you've compressed it down get your roller and roll it out lengthways like this so you're going to get a series of stripes going across and when you've rolled it out thin enough to go through your pasta machine take it through your pasta machine on the thickest setting which i will do now so you're left with a long strip like this okay and then all you're going to do is take it and cut it in half and again i'm not very good at eyeballing and then restack like so and then I'm going to take it through the pass machine I'm off the setting one more time and that's good and I want to leave it in this long strip because after all we are making a bangle and one thing I did forget to tell you guys is you do need some more black clay to lay on top of this I'm just going to quickly roll some out but this is going to be on a thin a thin setting. I'm going to take it down to number eight, which is um, my second th thinnest setting. I knew I'd forget something, I nearly always do. So like I say, I'm taking this down to a number eight. Nine being the thinnest. So I've got this long, thin strip of black clay that I'm just literally going to place on top of this. Just get rid of that excess. And you're ready to go. Making sure it's all nicely stuck together. Now it's time to get your stamps, any kind, but like I say, I'm using these ones and I absolutely love this. So I'm just going to take this now with these ones because they are a metal cutter and they're very open, it's a very open cutter. You don't want to press too hard because the clay actually gets stuck in there, but because this is a thin strip of clay. It works really good with this. If you do it a thicker Makume Gani stack, it doesn't work as well, in my opinion. I've just found that it, um, all the clay gets in there. And I'm gonna take my flower, and this I really need to press. I might have to stand to do this. Like so. Do another flower down here. Like so. Now, of course, you could put um, something else there, but I'm just going to use the space up with the with this cutter. I'm really hoping that's gone in deep enough.
okay so when you're happy with your pattern on your strip of clay you're just going to take your flexible blade like this it's going to give it a quick wipe and you're just going to start literally shaving off that black clay you're not digging deep at all this is a shaving technique to reveal that pattern underneath now if you're lucky enough to get little pieces like that you can keep them and use them for something else so I'm just shaving off the black where the pattern is I'm not shaving off um, the rest of the black if that makes sense I want that black outline so now you can see that pattern being revealed and the black layer on top is giving this really nice black outline. I don't know if you can see, but I'll show you once I've done this. Okay, so I think I'm gonna leave, I've just got this little bit here. I'm just gonna leave that as it is. Like I say, I'm not taking off any black around the outline, around the edges. Same with this, I'm just gonna slice all the way through and it is really thin shavings. Oh, that's pretty nice. I'm gonna save that piece, I like that. Like I say, you can get some nice pieces um, just from shaving the top off and you can use them for something else. Oh, I had a horrible thought then guys, I thought I was uh, not recording this for a second. Oops, that would have been a bad point to not record. So because you've used those um, stacks in the extruder, you can see you're getting so many different colours coming through. And that's what I like about it. And that's why I chose all those colours, because I wanted, I wanted it to be colourful but you could keep it really simple and just do two colours. You could just do black and white if you wanted. That would probably look really nice. Any colours at all. So I'm just um, continuing to shave this. Avoiding the outer black area. And you can cut down as much as you want to reveal the colours, the more of the colours underneath. Like so, and I think I'm good with that. These bits are a bit, they're not really useful to me, so I'm just going to turn them into scrap. So I'm just going to continue shaving this all the way down the length of the clay. And I've, I have mentioned this before, but when you're shaving, it's better to hold the blade more in the middle rather than out here you just get more controlled and just take your time with it because you don't want to cut too deep that you spoil the look and I'm really trying to keep a lot of this black outline on this section So you're very gently just dragging the blade along. Like so. All right guys, so that's all you do. Um, I'm just gonna go off the camera, off camera and finish this. I'm just gonna go all the way down until all my pattern is revealed and I will be back. All right guys, so I've shaved all the way down and this is what I'm left with. Look how pretty that is. I just love all of those colours. Now I've got enough here to make a bangle and a pendant. So I'm going to take my black strip ready for my bangle. I'm just going to double check it actually fits. Yeah, I did measure it. So I was just double checking. Now, um, let me think about where I want this to go because I'm not just going to lay it straight on top of this. I'm going to take those pieces that I want so I'm just going to cut them into sections to start off with now let's leave this one for the pendant and then we can use the rest so I'm just taking off a section for the pendant and we're left with these bits I'm 
and I just want to see how it's all going to fit together. I perhaps won't need this little bit here, we'll see. So I'm going to try and get as much of the pattern on as possible. Um, let me just break some of this down. Let me just take some off. Because of course we need to be adding our um, turquoise as well. I might have a change of mind, guys. I've not decided yet. I might not go with the turquoise. What am I doing? Right, this needs to be in the middle. So make that the center of the bangle. And put that there. Now I want all that to fit on there. So yeah, we've got plenty of room to play with. I don't need that little bit, but I can make something with it. So, I'm just going to leave that there for the time being. That's a, a rough idea of where I want things to be laid out. And I'm just going to get my turquoise clay and we'll do a quick chippy choppy turquoise. I'm not going all out to make it look like the real thing. It's just a little bit of added extra to go in your pendant and or bangle. Just need to find my other blade. Alright, so I'm just going to chop this up. Simple chippy choppy. I'm not using paint in this. You can. There's plenty of um, faux turquoise tutorials out there and a lot of them do use black paint I don't want to I want to use mica powder like I say this is not really an effort making it look like the real thing it's just a little extra something to add into the bangle all right so get your mica powder in there give the clay a good tumble get it all coated And then I like to give it another chop. So when you're happy with the size of the pieces, just give it another quick tumble. And then get your... Um, translucent liquid clay now this nozzle on this is for some reason I can't get anything to squeeze out of it so I'm just oops pouring it straight on there and that was probably way too much but we'll work with it give it a quick tumble Ooh, too much it's very sticky oh well I suppose I could always add some more clay in there, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to use it as is. Like I say, it's just a quick, a quick chippy choppy. Like so. Form it into a block, but I'm just going to clean up a little bit first. And we've just got a very small block of um, very rough faux turquoise. And now I've got filthy fingers. And no, I don't wear gloves. Don't like them. I like to feel what I'm doing. So, we've got that little block there. This is, video is probably going to be quite a long one, guys. I know some of you don't like the longer videos, but it is what it is, and I don't like missing bits out. So, there we go. Right then, let's get back to this. 
Okay, let me think, let me think. So I've left little gaps to put the turquoise in. I want to try and maintain all of this pattern on the bangle if I can. It doesn't always work out that way, but I'll try. But we need to burnish this. So I'm going to get my paper. Just start giving it a gentle burnish to start with, just to make sure it's on the clay. And I'm just burnishing the squares. I'm not burnishing it flush just yet. Just want to try and smooth it out just a little bit. It will get burnished again. All right, so that's on there good now. Now we've got to take our very sticky faux turquoise. And I don't know if you can see, but I've not necessarily left the gaps perfectly straight. I want this to look more... It doesn't have to be perfect. But remember I said keep a little bit back of the um, extruded sausage. I'm also going to add some of those in there as well. I wasn't going to, but um, on one bangle that I did similar to this, I did do that. So I thought, yeah, why not do it again? I was just going to add the turquoise. And all you're going to do is just push them into those gaps between these and it just, again, just gives a little bit of extra something and I just think it looks nice. All right, so I've squashed that in there and I'm gonna take some of my sticky, sticky turquoise and cut through. And we just need a little strip of it to fit in there and I've probably not made that wide enough or oh, I've not cut this thin enough and it is a little sticky it's more than a little sticky but whatever just shove it in there guys I don't want it perfect I want it more I don't even know what the word I'm looking for is it's not rustic because it's a not rustic not a rustic style but more um I don't know, you know what I mean, but I am going to put a little bit of this on the end, either end, and hopefully, although it doesn't matter a great deal, hopefully this will fit the whole bangle. I'm suspecting it won't though, but we'll see. All right, another wet wipe, clean up this gunk. I'm just going to wipe some of that excess off there. Let me just get my rubbing alcohol. Just want to get some of the gunk off the, the turquoise parts. All right, so it's kind of, I don't know, my brain is not working, guys. I can't think of the word that I'm looking for. It's not perfectly uniform, it's more random. Let's just go with random, <laughs> even though it's not random, but. I can't think of the word. All right, so now we've got all those pieces together. Now it re really needs a good old burnish to make sure everything's nice and smooth, nicely stuck together. And again, I will leave a link for, all the links for the products are in um, the description in my Amazon storefront. Okay. Now I feel like this is quite a long winded process, but I just love, love, love the results. So to me personally, it's worth the time and effort. It's not necessarily that complex of a technique. And don't forget this is a bangle, so it obviously takes a bit longer than a pendant, but uh, I really want to make sure it's burnished. I don't want anything cracking open as I place it over my bangle form. And I want to make sure it's really smooth as well, which I think it is. And that little bit needs a bit more. 
Just always take your time with the burnishing, guys, because it makes all of the difference uh, um, <clears throat> when you need to sand something, because if you get it as smooth as you can in the first place, you don't need as much effort to... Uh... Oh, very close. I'm just not going to get all of this turquoise on there unless I just move it up a little bit. It's going to be a tiny bit. I'd almost perfectly got that, but not quite, but no worries. So I'm just placing this on there. And as you can see, I'm keeping this flower as the center of the bangle. Just making sure it's needs to be brought over a little bit. Nicely on there. Give it a good press. And then cut away the excess. Now obviously this needs to be baked and then I'm going to have to add another layer underneath which is why I got the turquoise ready to go. Um, obviously if you want the bangle to be smaller, tight, a tighter fit, then roll the underneath layer thicker. Mine's on a number three. Um, the other thing you can do is obviously add some clasps at the end of the bangle. I don't tend to usually, but I'll be honest, the last one that I made, I don't know whether I've lost weight or something, because normally they fit pretty snug. But the one that I made last time, in exactly the same way as this, kept falling off. So, that being said, I may have to add a clasp which I'm not going to do on camera, but um, we'll see. See how it fits. But that's, there's always that option where you can just put a jump ring either end and then a lobster claw and a chain or um, some other form of clasp just to keep it on your wrist. So I'm just getting rid of the excess, making sure it's nice and smooth. And, whoops, almost there. Oh, and the other thing, guys, I keep making these bangles and uh, I keep wanting to keep them. <laughs> I might end up wanting to keep this one, I don't know yet. But there we go. That's the bangle ready to go in the oven. Um, you can just fiddle around with it for a little bit to make sure it's nice and neat, which I probably will do. Just a little bit there. But I think that's good. Okay, so that's the bangle. And I'm just going to give it a quick wipe with rubbing alcohol. Now guys, I'm not gonna show you how I put the bottom layer on. It's self-explanatory. You bake this first, and then you take your other piece of clay. I'll just quickly show you. Obviously take it off the metal form first. So you, this is just gonna be pure clay. You're not keeping this metal form on. And then just drop in your other piece in there underneath, squishing it down, and um, that's it. But put some liquid clay on first just to give it a bit of extra security. But I'm not doing that on camera because I feel like this um, video is going to be too long otherwise. Plus I do have another uh, bangle video where you can actually see me do that if you so wish. I'll leave a link for it. All right, so that's the bangle. I'm going to bake it. I'm going to sand it and buff it. I'm going to add the bottom layer to it. And then that's that. And then we've just got this little piece left. I thought I might as well make a pendant with it. Um, I'm just gonna get my paper again and give this a jolly good burnish. There's a little damp under there, it's sliding around. Okay. So 
to make sure it's nice and smooth. There's so few little ridges in that. I guess the mailman's just arrived because my dog's barking away. Why is it dogs always bark at the mailman? She knows who he is. She's uh, She likes him. She wags her tail. But she barks and growls all at the same time. Never understood that personally. All right, so there's the last piece that I had left over. And I'm literally just going to... I'm just going to bring it down so I can see though, guys. I'm just going to cut it out like that. Pretty little pendant like so. Okay, so there's the pendant as well. All right, guys, so matching pendant and bangle. And I'm just going to go and bake them, sand them, buff them. And I'll be back to show you the finished product. Okay guys, I'm finished, sanded, buffed. I added another layer underneath, which I didn't show you on camera, but there is a link to another bangle that I did where you can see me do that, but it's quite simple. Just rub some liquid clay on there, drop your strip in, press it down, cut off the edges. So there's the bangle, came out pretty nice, even if I do say so. I like this little bit of, um, turquoise there and here as well and then those little little bits that we added in there and then some more turquoise on the end so that's the bangle and there's the pendant just mirroring that flower in the bangle itself and I've just added a pinch bail and a cord again these pinch bales and cords will be linked in my Amazon storefront in the description down below if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. Um, I'd love for you to subscribe. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you later. Bye.